Look. All right, I think I got the go-ahead. Good afternoon. Thanks, everybody, for coming today in the rain. We want to be all mean. Um, we got a packed agenda today, so I am going ahead and get started. Um, although I'd like to first introduce our uh, wonderful committee. We have Cynthia Merrick, co-chair, who is not able to be here, but we also have Don uh, Nita. Mayor Miller, where are you? Okay, there you go. And then you have Don, Secretary, Shauna Reavers, back there. And we have, um, I'm sorry, Don's the Secretary. And member at large, Shauna, and Marissa Henderson, member at large. I also want to uh, mention our uh, AAUPAFT uh, folks that are here today. And Ms. Tammy had to walk back. Um, but you know she's so wonderful in helping us at all of our events. As well as Michelle Fecko, who you'll hear from later. And Mark Billy. So. Um, so as I mentioned, we have a lot to get through today, so I'm going to have uh, Ricardo, if he'll give us a uh, kickoff to how all these programs fit together. Thanks, hey everybody. Uh, yeah. Happy, uh, what is this, opening, opening day? Oh, it's long ago. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, it's sports <laughs> My wife works for the Detroit Sports Commission, so she's got stuff to do today with people in town who are supposed to be here. Is this good? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so quick question. I asked this. This has been around for a couple of years. Who's seen this in the last year or two? How many people have been here? So we've got a lot of people who this will be your first time. Um, doesn't mean that you're new. It just means that it's your first time to this session. Of all the workshops that SEC does, this is one that's just come around the last few years, um, and it's to address a common challenge that we have. There's a lot of acronyms up here, a lot of names, a lot of committees that you're going to hear about, entities. My role is just to take a brief kind of uh, an overview to give you some way to conceptualize these, um, these different areas. On the one side, you've got the, uh, the union, Local 6075, you've got the ASSC, you may have heard of the union council, and some of you may have even heard of the contract enforcement team. Um, you'll hear about each of those. On this side, we've got the ASPDC and the Academic Staff Mentoring Committee and the Academic Senate. And another more recent year development is the ATA and AAC. I use the acronyms. You're going to get to hear what the full names are, so I won't spill all those out right now. One of the ways that it may be helpful is to think about, you'll hear some of the historical basis, like where these came from. Um, on this grouping, these come from, these are either union supported, like the ASSC funding. It's, a, it's an entity that is purely driven by the union. It's not, some of these things are, are nominations. Uh, the union council is not contractual. It's part of our bylaws. It's in the union bylaws. So that's an entity that comes from there. And so is the, uh, the contract enforcement team is, is from those members. On the other side, we've got the ASPDC, which is a, an entity that is formed by the contract between the union and the university. It is run um, and administered by the administration. You're going to hear from the, um, the, the chair, part of the chair there. So the leadership, unlike, so ASSC leadership is from our members. The ASPDC is comprised of members who are appointed into a process that you'll hear about, but its leadership is administratively appointed. Um, funding from it comes from an agreed amount in the contract that is then administered by the administration. The academic senate you know, sits in between there as the academic governance that is faculty and academic staff. Um, so these first two um, here and here, you can think about as, as entities that work on us as academic staff professionals. So you may have workshops that are about how to perform the activities that you need to for the contract, like we do here, um, ESS, tenure promotion, professional records. On the other side, it's oftentimes things that are, again, outwardly facing how, do you, how to make you a better professional advisor, mentor, the roles that you do with students. The newer group, the Academic Training Academy and Academic Advisor Council and its training committee, tend to focus more on the student-facing side of what we do. So the workshops that you'll see are often about how to deliver service, what's going on, things that would also be often seen in outside conferences that come together. Um, 
So if that's confusing, it should get a, a, a little less so as we as we move forward. We're also going to hear a, bit, a little bit about the different titles that we have and how those interplay with our functions. And actually, that's a slide that we're adding this year because it's something that comes up a lot. And our next speaker is Michelle. Michelle. Yes. Michelle. Mm -hmm. Come on up, Michelle. Thank you, Ricardo. And thanks, Sarah. Um, I'm here today because I'm not an academic advisor, but I'm still academic staff. And when I first came on campus three and a half years ago, a friend of mine came up and said, hey, ESS and promotion, start now. And I'm like, huh? So when I would get emails about academic staff events, I was like, well, do I fit into this? My title is ASO, I'm an academic services officer, but I oversee biology labs. I don't <laughs> advise students. I work kind of indirectly with them. So how do I fit into this? And when I approached the group, I said, OK, well, what about the rest of us who aren't the academic advisors? Because when I would go to these events, it would be mostly academic advisors and kind of geared toward them. And so when I approached them, I said, OK, we'll throw in this slide because this includes all these other people as well. So academic staff is more than academic advisors or those who work directly with students. It's people who do work directly with students, like academic advisors and counselors, financial aid officers, admissions counselors, extension program coordinators maybe, but some of us don't. Maybe the archivists don't or the academic service officers like I don't. And so sometimes seeking um, ways to get what we need for ESS and promotions a little more challenging. But as we're going to hear later, we have a mentorship program. So if you know new people who might not know who to turn to to figure that out, there's other folks like us. I'm fortunate enough to work in biology. We have great academic advisors there who have been very supportive of those of us who have slightly different roles than you do. But I know some people work kind of independently in their departments and may not have those resources. Please encourage them to be a part of this group because they fit into this too. And so we can all meet up and find each other and network and support each other because that's what we're here for. Good? Yep. Okay. And our next Michelle. Oh, other Michelle. <laughs> I mean, other Michelle. I'm Michelle Fecto, um, and I'm the executive director for the union. Um, so the AAUP, AFT, is a labor organization. We started out in 1972 with um, uh, organizing into a union. It was just AAUP, the American Association of University Professors. Um, that happened after the university decided to lay off 200 people right before Christmas, randomly, whoever they felt. There were no rules. Um, when you don't have a, con a union contract, you're pretty much employed at will, and you don't have a say. So this heard um, an organization, if you look at our contract, the layoff language is one of the most intense and the best parts of our contract because it was born out of um, what I consider administration abuse of their powers and, and I got a response around job security for the layoff language. Um, so and later on in 1997 we affiliated with the American Federation of Teachers which is what DPS um, is, you know, that's our sister local and a number of other mostly um, urban areas are uh, organized by AFT, Michigan so uh, Education Association has mostly the suburban um, and rural uh, district. Uh, so we have uh, many sister organizations across the state. Um, and that also made us be with the AFL-CIO. The AFL-CIO is an umbrella organization where all different uh, unions belong. And one of the benefits of that is we have negotiated benefits we have, uh, I just gave some referrals. Well, for instance, uh, the, the union at the highest levels negotiate with uh, around benefits like legal benefits, financial benefits. So if you ever need an attorney, call the union office, we can hook you up. You have to be a full member of the union, fair share. Others don't get this benefit. If you're a full union member, you get a like, free consultation and discounted um, services. And I. Uh, personally, have used them. Some of my kids have gotten into trouble, but it's another story. <laughs> it's a great benefit. So we are part of a very, we're very much integrated with the, the uh, labor community um, and many different other organizations through this. Um, and part of that is um, the labor organizations also have a say in who becomes board of governors, uh, who is nominated by the Democratic Party. 
who's going to be on the board of governors. That, that's also how, so we actually screen the Democrats who want to be on the board of governors. We make sure that they understand our concerns and there's people that, if there are problems, they can go to. So that's another benefit of being in this organization. Um, so our purpose is to effectively advocate for the interests of faculty and academic staff, build strength through collective action, uh, negotiate contracts with the administration, and by law, we're uh, limited to wages, hours, and working conditions. We also assist members in resolving disputes uh, with the university administration. And if there's a violation of the contract, we file grievances, um, which is a more formal process where the uh, administration must meet with us. And if we can't resolve it, we have the opportunity to go to a third party, an, an arbitrator, where the arbitrator makes a, a decision. So it's, uh, it's independent from the university. and. Um, we're not beholden to them. I don't work for the, I used to work for the university, but I don't. Your dues pays for my salary, so when I advocate, I don't have to worry about them affecting my job. Um, so I, I can be a, a bulldog if I so choose. <laughs> <laughs> um, they do see me as sort of a pain. Um, uh, hopefully, uh, someone I can work with as well. Um, and this idea of collective action is really important to our union. I know Mark. Um, just last, the last Board of Governors meeting, uh, last Friday, organized um, to retain a couple of lecturers who were high senior that were let go. And even though the administration complied with the contract, gave them the notice that they were supposed to get, um, we were able to collectively put pressure to get them to rescind that non-renewal and to extend their contract. And that's what we mean by collective action. So. Sometimes there are issues that are, the idea of power and numbers is very meaningful. And the idea of union is not just people in the union office. It's people looking out for each other. Other fellow members came to those meetings to stand up for their colleagues. And that's what a union truly is. So this, we are here to help build those opportunities and find strategic ways, effective ways, where our, we can collectively have an impact to protect our interests and make sure people are treated fairly. So that's... What are our purposes? Our, our total membership is about 1,850 bar unit members. Um, anyone who works 50% or more as a, uh, as a faculty member or as a um, academic staff person. Most of our union is faculty, which is 1,500. Um, and about 350 are, um, are all these other things. We also have athletics and um, uh, we have trainers and coaches, too, in there, too. So um, there's a number of ways, if you wanted to get involved, that you can get involved. And the more people get involved, the stronger we are. That's the whole idea of this collective action, or this collective group. That, uh, that's where our power lies. Um, so we have ASSC. And one of the things um, that this group, there's opportunities to run. The terms are one year. Except if you go for co-chair, then you are committed to being the chair the following year. We, uh, we generally run the elections for um, ASSC um, May, June, in that period of time. I did bring a few nomination forms. If you are interested in participating in, um, on the ASSC and helping to run these um, events and coming up with ideas of things you might want to do. and. Uh, work with colleagues from across campus. Uh, that would be wonderful. We uh, really encourage you to do it. It's a short term. It's something great to put on your vita. Union work is also considered service to the university, so you can put it down as uh, meaningful service. So I'm going to just leave these by Mark. And if you are so inclined, um, take one. If you have a colleague that might be interested, take that. It wasn't here today. You can take one. Yes. There's slides for each of these things. And there's slides for each of those things. <laughs> so I should stop. No, I don't think we have the political action I'm committee. I'm next, so keep on going. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the political action committee, we have the council rep. We're looking for a council rep from every single department. Um, it was great if we can have both an academic staff person and a faculty person. So we'll talk more about that. Um, rounding, which is um, making sure that we have full membership. Right now we have about 76% of the bargaining unit is a full union member. We would like it to be even higher. So if you want to work with Mark, our organizing director on that. We have our executive board, which are also we're taking nominations for now. Uh, and we have a number of other committees um, that I want to bring up. Um, 
Mark in particular, and I don't want to say anything. He's like, I like to stay in the background kind of guy. Um, and, but he's wonderful to work with and, and, and fun to work with if you. But he also um, has been working on something called the Social Justice Committee. Um, I don't know if you remember when there was a ban on Muslims, the, the, the travel ban that came out. We organized a, I shouldn't say we, but mostly Mark. But we, we all were, um, organized a rally in support of our Muslim faculty, academic staff, and students. Um, that's something the Social Justice Committee did, and, and, not, and they get involved in other issues as well. Um, we have a communications committee to help make sure people understand what the union's uh, doing and what it's about. And then there's a, a, a gender equity committee that we're working on. It has a child care committee, which Sarah Doyle also serves on. And um, we just sent out something recently, if you should have gotten your email, which talks about family-friendly resources that you can tap into. That was something that that committee did. If you're interested in getting involved with any of these things, um, just let us know. We'd love to have you. Um, and we're also looking at pay equity uh, as well. Uh, and we're actually working with, and, and uh, Paul Beavers is very involved with that. We're looking at pay disparities based on gender, but we're also going to be looking at other areas of pay disparities as well. And we're meeting with the provost and the president on that. So, so hopefully, hopefully, we can actually get something like that. So that's, uh, that's the AAUP, AFT. And if you have any questions, just uh, come here. Thanks. Thank you, Michelle. Right. This was a great segue for ASSE. Mm -hmm. um, ASSE's uh, purpose is to promote the interest of higher education and to advance the standards, ideals, ideals and well from the academic staff on Wayne State University. Um, this is accomplished via um, some of the activities such as today, so workshops and luncheons, including the professional uh, record, annual review and selective salary, ESS and promotion. Uh, special topics on uh, benefits, human resources, FMLA, and these are really inspired from you all. So if you have ideas that you would like to be seen presented at the um, ASSE workshops, let us know. If you have evaluations in front of you, we'd love your feedback. Um, we also have um, other activities such as our holiday parties, which many of you may have been to, recognition luncheons. Basically, we'd love to get together, we'd love to celebrate, we'd love to eat. So again, please feel free to participate. Um, as far as composition goes, all academic staff who are members of the w WSU AAUP AFT um, are members. Thus, you are interested in being part of the ASSC. Um, it's pretty easy because you already are. So um, just keep that in mind. Although if you'd like to seek out a leadership position, which I strongly encourage, um, we did have some nominations, as Michelle mentioned, uh, available today. Those will run throughout um, throughout May um, and into June, but if you feel free to, you know, nominate today, nominate your colleague next to you, or nominate yourself. Um, those are, um, <coughs> those that want to run must be full members of the AAUP AFT, um, as uh, Michelle mentioned, co-chair is a two-year term, um, with, and we also have a secretary and member at Larges. So one of the things that I've enjoyed most about being on the ASSC for a few years now is the opportunity to be a part of a collective voice, as Michelle mentioned. I really think that that's important for us as academic staff um, to have that support for one another. So, you know, definitely, again, encourage you to get involved. If you're interested in running for any of the offer officer positions, please, please feel free to contact myself. I'll be here today. And you can also find me, um, you know, what? Yeah, Wayne, uh, email, uh, office number, you got it. So thank you so much. And I'm going to turn it over to our contract enforcement uh, team to be presented by, is she back there? Yep. Barbara Jones? <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> Way back there. Yeah, I was trying to get out of there. Ah, and not around here. <laughs> Hello. My name is Barbara Jones. I'm the contract implementation officer for the AUP AFT. And, um, Something that started new for all of us uh, this year, Michelle, was that we started meeting formally. We always met, but it was sort of informal. And now we have actually the contract enforcement team. We meet on a regular basis every week. Um, our goal is to resolve concerns before they become a violation. We try to do things in a friendly way. Um, there are people who are on the other side, who are administrators, who want to do the same thing you do. They want to come down here, do their jobs, do a good job, and go home and live their lives. They're not down here to make things difficult. So 
they are just as anxious to resolve issues as we are. Sometimes that doesn't work out so well and we have to go into a formal setting. So who's on the team? Well, they're the grievance coordinator for faculty, Rita Casey. She's not here, uh, of course, because she's faculty. Uh, the, there's also the grievance officer on our side, Ricardo De La Rosa. You already uh, uh, met him. Uh, uh, Bob Arkin is my counterpart on the uh, um, faculty side the, as the contract implementation officer. And uh, then, of course, there's a union president. Every, every organization's got a union president. <laughs> Uh, and he's terrific, and you've already met Michelle Factu. Um, one of the things we like when we come together, uh, besides the pool that Michelle usually brings in for us when we meet, is to have the opportunity to talk among ourselves and bounce ideas off. With faculty and academic staff, we're all in this together. So if we're having an issue on our, on our side, chances are there's somebody on the faculty side who's having that same issue. So we're, we're forever <coughs> sharing. How, how can we resolve things uh, the best? Is Cammie here? Oh, OK. Uh, can't, can't run without, without Tammy. I, I, I described her once, uh, even though her form, she's formerly the executive assistant. I would say she's the goddess of the office because she sort of resolves everything that we need. If you need something, call <coughs> Tammy. She'll point you in the right direction. Um, our function, as I said, is really to review, I want to say this exactly the way, because I liked it the way it was written that we meet weekly to review and work on and resolve dozens of issues, and I mean dozens of, of issues, Th things that are potential issues that we stop from actually being an issue uh, is very important. Um, and we, the teams work together to investigate um, and to strategize over how we can do this. Is there anything else you want to know about us besides we're, we're very, very happy? to be able to do this. Um, I came to, to, to the university 10 days after the union was voted in. So I've been with it a long time. <laughs> and uh, um, most people who, who, were, who were from Detroit were brought up to always be pro-union. And um, I just can't think of any other way. Yes, Carl. Uh, in most of these, you're going to see an opportunity to get involved. Um, this doesn't have the same traditional voting <laughs> application, however. The team um, over the past couple of years has been looking to try to develop some new contract enforcement um, skill sets. So if you happen to be a member who likes to read in, in fairly detail um, the contract, finds it interesting, um, or for whatever reason would like to be involved with kind of just coming in, um, working with us for some long-term development, I'm sure that we somebody on the team in the future, we, we, we need um, to have some sustainability contact us. Um, there's not a formal mechanism for this conversation that we have, and we really would love to have somebody who's been around and been looking at it, if, if you've been impacted by the contact, and they're taking an opportunity to dig into its intricacies, um, let us know. If you're reading anything interesting, thanks for coming me. If you're reading anything interesting that has anything to do with the union, send it to Mark Dilly. Mark makes certain that we all get copies of everything, no matter how obscure the article is, about what's going on with unions um, in the, 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 the education arena and just around the country, period. Thank you. Join up with us, Veronica from the Academy of Staff Professional Development Committee. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Um, I'm Veronica Seeds, uh, Chair of the Academic Staff Professional Development Committee, ASPDC. It's a good way to say it. Uh, our committee is comprised, we have about six members now. Um, the members are appointed by the Academic Senate Policy Committee under the Provost Office for a two year term, most, most of the time they serve a two-year term, um, but everyone can participate in our events. So we host a number of different events. Uh, this year we've kind of mm -hmm. tried to focus on uh, more professional development. Uh, so it's been off to a slower start because we're not doing our traditional programs that we do every year. Um, but we do have a, 
an exciting program coming up in the next couple of weeks, uh, diversity and, and inclusion and how it impacts us as academic staff. So that will be coming up April 16th. Hope to see you there. Um, we also um, give an opportunity for um, you all to obtain travel grants. So if you're interested in going to a professional um, committee, um, you can submit a request for a travel grant. We will um, reimburse you or cover up to $800 max or 50% of your, of your travel arrangement. So this gives you a good opportunity um, to see, you know, what other people are doing at other institutions and what the trend is in your field. Um, so that's, that's kind of a big push for us. And you can find more information about that on our website. And I think that's about all I wanted to make sure that I, that I mentioned. We do have some committee members here. Um, so if you guys can just raise your hand. Um, we have our appointed members, and then we, our past members, some, some of them have stayed on as volunteers, and we give them an opportunity to do that, too. So we look forward to serving you. Thanks, Brian. Mm -hmm. Hello, uh, Matt Fredericks, uh, current chair of the Academic Staff Mentoring Committee. Um, so that's what it stands for. Uh, who we are, let's see, some of us are here. The founder of the Academic Staff Mentoring Program, Nada Simon, is here. Uh, Tamara Serrano is also a, uh, a current member. Melissa Roshan and Diane Fears and Kristen Chinnery. Let us not forget her either. So this is perhaps the newest uh, addition to the many acronyms, the alphabet soup of acronyms you're learning about today. But what we do is uh, match a senior academic staff member, that is someone who has ESS, um, they've made it through that all-important five-year interview with a junior academic staff uh, mentor. Uh, and So there's the mentee and the mentor, and they, uh, in doing that, the senior member gains some leadership skills, improves their mentoring skills, and the uh, junior academic staff member hopefully learns more about Wayne State. Wayne State's a big place. Um, there's lots of little nooks and crannies, and depending on where you work, you might be isolated alone in your office, and if you don't get out, uh, you might not know about various opportunities, various uh, tacit knowledge about the way things work here. Most importantly, uh, ideally, the, uh, mentor, the mentor is going to guide the person through uh, promotion and the final ESS process um, <clears throat> in whatever, whatever way that might work. Um, so. Uh, People determine amongst themselves how often they meet. They might meet bi-weekly, they might just email, they might just meet once a semester. Um, <clears throat> they basically conduct uh, their mentor-mentee relationship uh, as they want. Um, how, oh, sorry, going there. How to become a mentor or mentee. In general, once a year, we do a call in the fall, um, invite all academic staff members to sign up if they want to be a mentor or mentee, and then to attend a kind of speed dating uh, luncheon, which is a great way, if nothing else, to get to know uh, your fellow academic staff, what they do. And uh, <clears throat> in addition, they fill out a little web form, all sorts of uh, you know little things, how often they'd like to meet, what they're most interested in, in a mentor-mentee relationship. Um, we share that data with Cambridge Analytica. And they, <laughs> just joking, just joking. But uh, we, we run through our own secret uh, academic staff algorithm and ideally match you with uh, the perfect person to you know, facilitate things. How, last but not least, to get on the academic staff mentoring committee? Um, you're appointed through these various committees mentioned today ASPDC, ASSC, um, so. COSW. <laughs> COSW. Um, I think we have a sort of member at large sense too, but uh, you're appointed through that and it's a three-year term. I think I might be coming up on the end of mine and <clears throat> that's how it happens. So on that committee they can say, who wants to do something in addition? And there you have it. Yes? One distinction that seems to be here, we'll hear about other mentoring later on in advising. 
because this is more about the contractual processes of ESS promotion, you might have a mentee that's not in your same functional area. You could have, for example, a financial aid officer who's been around in medical committees might be advising or might be, met, be a mentor to somebody in a different area. Right. And we try to match those. That's kind of why we have a web form to try to get the, all that so they're going to be matched as well as possible. So what's, in, what's critical, though, is that somebody who has, who's familiar with the Wayne processes, not necessarily your functional area. You're going to hear about some of those mentoring. So you might have two different mentoring relationships. It might be an all-in-one, but it doesn't have to be so. Yes. Thank you, Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> by, all <rights, clears throat> me. by all rights, you should be hearing from Kristen Chenry right now. Unfortunately, she's out having her knee repaired, so she's not available. I am, however, very happy to be talking about the Union Council reps because I think it's a very important organization. And this is Kristen's slide, so if I don't make as great a reference to it as I might, it's because I didn't write it and just saw it a half hour ago for the first time. Um, I believe very much in the Union Council Rep. When Michelle Facto was talking, she said a union was essentially people looking out for each other. And I think that's my sense of what a union is as well. And I think part of that is people understanding each other's position, what it's like to be working here, what the challenges are, um, uh, what the happinesses and the unhappinesses are. And I think the area in which the membership is, does the best communication to get that information out broadly is at the union council rep meetings. Right now we're meeting on the third Tuesday of every month, excluding Jan uh, June and July, because nobody's available in June and July anyway, and we meet up on the third floor of the Maccabees building. Every unit is entitled to have a union council rep, and we very much encourage you, if there's not a union council rep for your unit, to go about uh, electing one or identifying one. When I first got involved, there were so few of us that we kind of met near just, uh, Kristen's office in the Ruther. There were like six of us that would show up all the time. We're now in a much larger room than even the union office meeting room would accommodate because there are a lot of us here. Um, so we facilitate a lot of communication. Typically in a meeting, what we begin with is by doing a round robin about the issues and situations that have come up in our units. Uh, we then go on to talk to the uh, director of organizing. And that's a really important thing because a lot of us become involved with the organizing. The uh, uh, rounding, uh, I do phone bank stuff, so if you've gotten some call reminding you there's a meeting going on, it's probably me calling at the other end. Uh, and just the challenges of getting people really involved in the union. We've sponsored the social justice committee. We've sponsored the communication committee. And one of the great outcomes of that has been our new Council Communicator Newsletter, which I believe you've all gotten the most recent issue to uh, in a uh, email just this last week. Uh, and we do other things like the parking committee that we have, which really is looking out for what's really important to most of us, which is getting here on campus and not losing every bit of a raise that we uh, might have to increase parking costs. More importantly, if you're on the committee, you tend to communicate back out to the memberships. I have a slot in our library's forum, which is where I talk about what's going on in the union. When people bring up questions and they tend to approach me before they approach other people in the union, I often can point out that these questions are not unique to the libraries, which is who I work for. And, uh, I think that is a key to having a really successful union because we have to understand each other's situations and we have to recognize that bond between each other. And a good way of doing that is this committee. And again, if your unit doesn't have a representative, think about becoming that representative to the union council. So thanks. Faculty as well are on this committee. Uh, <coughs> um, 
I think very highly of the academic staff and we're very active on the committee, but there are a number of faculty members and you'd be surprised how often the issues that are confronting the faculty are the same ones confronting the academic staff. How often the concerns that we have are their concerns as well. Okay. I actually have a question, Paul. If I remember mm -hmm. correctly, you can have um, an academic staff and a faculty member yes. represent. So just because you have oh. somebody from your department representing, um, if it's a faculty, we can have an academic staff and vice versa, correct? Yes. Uh, okay. uh, yes. School of Information is a, a case in point where they have both representatives. Yeah, so. Great. Thank you. And uh, Simon. Yeah, I'm taking off all of these committees that I've been on <laughs> over my 25 years here. And then the award for who had the most committee of? No, it's got to be Barbara Jones. She's in your audience. Um, the Academic Senate is created for faculty governance through the Board of Governors statutes. We are the group that is to determine academic policy. Um, it's organized every faculty member, every um, academic staff member who works 50% or longer can be a member of the Academic Senate. You are elected based on your college or division um, and it's each time it's for a three-year term. Uh, and, you know, you don't switch your wrists, you don't sign them, you don't Yeah, You want me to stand here? I don't like to stand here. <laughs> it's too much like teaching. Um, Please, thank you. You're elected for a three-year term. Uh, you can be re-elected. There are no term limits. And it's arranged with each... Like the House of Representatives is in Washington, D.C. Every college or division gets a proportional representation. There are 82 members, and six of those 82 are members at large. Every year, two of us are elected as member at large. The election is going on now. It's not a plug to vote for me, but I am running. <laughs> but I would like academic staff to vote. There is one faculty member and four academic staff to vote. The top two people get a vote and get on for a three-year term. Um, the policy committee... Can I interrupt you for a moment? While sure. Nada has to be very fair in giving out that information. I don't. I am campaigning for me to sign. Vote for me to sign. Thanks, Barbara. Barbara. It's, it's like Chicago voter only and all. But you can't, you can only vote once because with computers it's different. Um, there are uh, committees at the um, seven standing committees, budget. Curriculum and instruction, um, facilities, student <coughs> services, and technology. Um, uh, student affairs, of which I chair. <laughs> um, research, research, which is, you know, for me, it's up here. <laughs> um, and the elections committee. Um, every senator serves on a committee. The policy committee is elected every fall. There is one three-year term, and then two people continue if they've been elected for a three-year term, and four one-year terms. This past fall, I was elected to the three-year policy term. To be on policy, you meet virtually every Monday afternoon with the provost, who is chair of the Academic Senate, because that gets him there. Uh, in, in the past, I understand the uh, provost did not like to regularly attend and didn't. 
So they made them that, that job chair of the Academic Senate. The Senate also has a president, and that is elected by the, the senators. Um, the election for Senate president is Wednesday, and there is one person running, and it's normally it's not a contested election, not like member at large or the unit elections. Um, all the meetings, the minutes are on the website. So once, if you become a senator and you want to choose which committee that you want to be on, uh, you can see what they do. I'm very lucky. I've been chair of student affairs for a number of years. Um, I have a couple of members here. We're a fun committee. We do a lot of neat things. There are student, uh, academic staff who only choose to be on student affairs, which makes me feel good. Um, the policy committee determines many things. Uh, we determine what goes forward. We put people on committees. We look at your choices, but uh, P&T is meeting. How many, a couple of people here are on the university academic staff P&T. We choose which people we want, the deans or your, can be self-nominated. And then we go through and make sure that it's, there's gender equity, there's racial equity, uh, so that we don't have all what I call dead European white men on all of the committees. We, we really try Especially to make sure. Part. Pardon me? Especially the dead part. <laughs> right. Um, the, the, I happen to love serving on the Senate. It's a lot of fun. You interact with faculty, you interact with academic staff, and you get to know um, what's going on. The one big thing the Senate did this year is the new Gen Ed. It took a lot of time. Uh, I would say I probably had over 100 hours of reading and discussions of what should be on the new Gen Ed. And I have to say, for my support, I asked for two things. One, intermediate comp can be taught in the department. Uh, someone who teaches curriculum development for another university, I think it's important because how you write for chemistry is not how you write for my field history. So the departments can do that. And the second thing was the GEOC, the General Education Oversight Committee, is the one who determine what is and what is not gen ed courses. And I insisted that an academic staff member who advises be put on that committee with a vote. And that will happen in September. So. To me, somebody with boots on the ground, who deals with students, who sees what works and what doesn't work, can tell the faculty who don't have a clue what works and do what doesn't work. And the president and the provost and policy went for it. So, any questions, feel free to contact me, n.simon at wayne.edu, and I'll be, I've convinced other people to run, and they did. And some of them even won. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. I'm going to Marissa Henderson up to speak uh, to advising the <coughs> Academy. Importantly, Kate couldn't be here, so. <laughs> yeah, Kate couldn't be here because she runs and she does a great job of doing the. Um, Advisor Training Academy, um, and it's training for advisors um, or anyone who, um, uh, academic staff really, anyone is really open um, to make sure that you have that support throughout the semester um, to be good at your job. Um, so they offer training, a six module training curriculum for new advisors, um, training to support new technology, the policies that you need, and skill development. Okay. Um, and then at the end of that training, you are um, you are given certification, okay? So that is free certification that you can put on your professional record. Um, there's a level one, which is open to all, okay? Even non-advising staff. Um, I just recently completed that uh, last 
um, rotation. Um, and then there's a level two also, and it promotes advanced professional development. If you want to know what the requirements to get each one, it is online um, and the um, ATA website. Um, there's also a, a lot of community activities that she uh, make sure everyone knows. Um, there's lunch and learns that happens on Friday. Um, there's a book club that goes throughout the semester. There's advisory directory, advising, advisory board. There's recognition. So once you get your certification, there is a, a nice presentation for those who make it during that rotation. Um, recognition T, level two conference award, award advisor article publications. Um, and then this past rotation, level one, the, there were 65 that completed. And then to hit level two, 15 completed. Has anybody made it to level two? Anything to add? Any thoughts, comments? I was going to say, the bonus, though, we're all looking for funding, right, to go to conferences and to attend things. You get a $250 bonus stipend funding award to pay for yeah. registration fee. Yeah, so after you complete your level two. So if you complete your level one, you're happy there. Um, if like you see your staff and you don't necessarily need to go to level one, like, do level two, it's worth it. And, you know, we're all talking about lack of funding sitting there. Waiting to be picked up, right? <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you, Marissa. And yeah, I think we have last but not least on our uh, academic advising um, council. It's a council committee, I'm sorry. What's it? Council committee. Uh, council committee. Hi, for those of you I haven't met, I'm Laura Hetzler. I'm presenting on the AAC today. I'm actually the past president. Um, Stephanie was not available to join us today as our current president. Um, the council came out of the goal to keep advisors from being soloed within the departments with the decentralization of advising across campus. Um, our goal is so that we are all using the same techniques, the same best practices, um, making sure that everybody can be up to date on whatever uh, the latest theories, the latest topics. Um, we do rely on Kate and the ATA a lot to help us push stuff out, to help us support, to help us um, enhance our communication plan. Um, but really that's what we, we're sort of trying to come together as a unit so that we have uh, sort of um, a sense of community, not just professionally, but also interprofessionally. Um, so there's a theme here, right? It's, it's communication and please run for our elections if you haven't noticed that at the luncheon. Uh, we have elections. Rachel's going to send out, the as the election chair, she'll send out uh, nominees for any academic advisor who's interested in serving. Um, those will go out on April 3rd. And we will be looking for a president-elect, a secretary, and two members at large. We did recently adjust the way that we are set up so that Every time we are electing members at large, one of the two people has to be from a professional school in order to increase representation across campus and not, we are getting pretty heavily uh, focused on class advisors and UAC advisors. So this is a way to kind of make sure all, everybody's represented on the council. May is when the elections will actually run. Yes, ma'am? Are ASLs and closing advisors? No, advisors are advisors. Uh, uh, classification. Uh, ASLs advice? Yeah. So the university counselors when I was in sure, high school. Sure, they do, the but it's, I mean, the way, the way that the, the way that the, um, Rachel, why can't I come up with the word? What? I wasn't listening. It's okay. Um, the word's not contract. The word is a charter. It, it talks well, about advisors. So, our, what I believe it is anyone who advises an undergraduate population. So, like, I think we do accept ASOs. ASOs, but not if they are grad ASOs. That's true. You have just to an undergrad ASO. I just, you just mentioned professional schools. I was going to say, what if you're not going to be for professional schools? But, like, business has professional school advisors who are undergraduate advisors. So does education. So does nursing. So there are... Yeah. So Applebaum has one or two. Well, yes. are. Yeah. 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 You are. I'm on the AAC and I'm an ASL. You are an ASL. I advise the Mortuary Science Program, which is an undergraduate right. program. Yeah. Yeah. So, if we can verify yeah. that you advise an undergraduate population, you can be. Mm -hmm. right. Including. ASL or a. That's 
No, only undergrad. Only undergrad. Yeah. Um, like I said, one of our goals is to have uh, happy is not the right word. Have a well working community across campus. So we do that also through, through social events and social outreach. Our annual picnic and um, business meeting is coming up in May. So that's sort of a chance to find out what's been going on around campus as well as just sort of spend some time developing those critical working relationships that I think we all rely on on a daily basis. And that'll be May 16th. Um, we've also started other things like advisor meetups, if you see those emails. Um, Robert's going to have an, a, start a uh, softball team for us this spring. Co-ed, co-ed, so I'm looking for players. Advisors so don't just run for things. Join a softball team. And there's also going to be a Euchre tournament on April 18th. Um, the other thing we run across campus is the annual meeting and summit that's now held every fall. The theme for this fall will be self-care, so if you're interested in presenting as a way to kind of enhance your professional development, please watch for the announcement that we're taking proposals. Um, there are several committees that people have asked to be on, so when vacancies, or if you're interested in serving on a committee, we have a communications committee, there's the summit planning committee, there's the training committee with Ryan. I think that's all of them. The election. You, yeah, a committee of one. <laughs> we love you. <laughs> um, the best way to find out about what is going on is to go in through the advisor training website. Like I said, we do rely on Kate a lot for her support in uh, staying active across campus. So all of our information is posted on the advisor training website. Any questions? <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Everything, right? So if everybody could just help me thank all of our presenters. Thank you again for coming today. Please provide your evaluations. And I just want to put a quick plug um, to Don for next month, our last uh, event of the academic year, um, which will be our service project. Usually it's in the fall. This year we're going to do a spring service project. So, so as Sarah mentioned, um, the academic staff steering committee, we always do actually a service project. Um, during, one during the academic year. The last two years we um, had our service project around December during the holidays. If you recall, two years ago we took donations, mostly toys, for Children's Hospital and then last year we, um, our project was for the Alternative Girls, which is a local community organization, um, nonprofit company that we helped. So this year what we're going to do is our spring project, the last perhaps a couple of months, we're going to actually next month at our meeting, tell you all the details about it. We're going to actually make it an educational theme. We would like to collect books, primarily maybe for elementary school children, um, some school supplies. Maybe we'll identify also some projects or some volunteer activities that any of you can you know, maybe be available and would want to participate. And we're going to reach out to the community, OK? Um, people in the community that actually you know, are affiliated with Wayne State or not, right? and so that they can see all the great work that we do. So it's going to have an educational thing. Our place that we're going to have next month's meeting is yet to be determined. Um, it's a very busy time in April, and a lot of places have been booked for over a year. So we'll get that information out to you, but it's going to be Thursday, April 26th. Um, during that meeting, just really quick, we're just going to have maybe a quick slideshow about what the ASSC has done this year, kind of summarize the different meetings that we've had, um, talk about the service project, of course, a little bit more. We're going to have five door prizes, okay? So everyone's going to get a raffle ticket with some cool, nice prizes. Um, and just kind of have a little social event like we always do here with lunch as well. So we'll send you out all those details later on. So we hope to see you Thursday, April 26th. Thanks. All right. Thank you for everybody for coming today. Have a good afternoon. Say bye. Thanks, Mark. Uh, Try to went to touch it. it and went to break it. Right. Um, stop. <laughs>